today we're going to be talking about cognitive distortions. So if you're new here, my name is Michelle Pava. I'm a finance therapist and I'm a trauma therapist. And let me tell you, cognitive distortions are not uncommon. So first of all, if you're interested in reading, if you're looking for a good book to read, go to my site, thefinancetherapist.com, go to books and get a free chapter of each one of my books that are out right now. And this is especially good if you have some financial anxiety going on. But let's talk about cognitive distortions. How do they hinder financial wellness? Well, number one, what is a cognitive distortion? It's in the realm of mental health. It's usually a thought pattern. It's an an opinion or a bias. It affects our own view of things or our view of our surroundings. The belief has always been unintentionally reinforced throughout our lives because you can just sort of uncheck it. So they often follow subtle patterns of thinking, and we're going to be talking about different patterns. What are some of these cognitive distortions? So usually the error in the distortion is a trigger, okay? So it's something that um, a financial therapist might say something like, think of cognitive distortions when it comes to money as either helping or hurting your financial competencies. That probably doesn't really, you know, mean a whole lot. When I get into the examples, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about, and you're probably going to hear yourself in some of them. So number one, one of them is magnification or minimization. And these are exaggerated or minimized ideas over the importance of an event. So for instance, one might believe their own achievements are not important or that their mistakes are unforgivable. These types of distortions will give you an overinflated perception that might even seem dramatic. And you will kind of know that they're dramatic, but you'll feel like they're true. So it's sort of like making a mountain out of a molehill. But if you feel the distortion, you think it's normal. So minimizing people and experiences um, can feel like it's out of the blue. It can make you feel like you can't afford things, that you're never going to get ahead, that you have no budget, that uh, you don't have money issues or you do have money issues, or that managing money is simply too overwhelming. But it can go into catastrophizing as well. So this is seeing the worst of any situation. Um, think of it as, uh, in Saturday Night Live, I believe it was, they used to have this character, Debbie Downer, and this was Debbie Downer, seeing the worst of every situation. Uh, sometimes you can see, you know, you're, you're a realist, you can see what's happening in front of you, but sometimes you can view a bad circumstance affecting the person as the worst thing. So yeah, things can be bad, but they're not always like the worst thing in the world, right? Um, so this is a big deal because... You might assume that your budget means the end of the world, and it might be time for you to have some money conversations with yourself if you feel this level of anxiety that you feel like you have to catastrophize. Then there's also overgeneralizing. So when you overgeneralize, it's it's almost like very black and white thinking. So for instance, saying like, I feel awkward speaking in public. I'm always so awkward. Well, when you say things like always... Or um, sometimes, never, some, none. These are words that you feel identify you. So if you feel like you're always awkward, that's irrational because there's times that you're not feeling that you're uh, awkward. So when we overgeneralize, it, it makes us label ourselves and we will believe the labels. Now there's also magical thinking. Magical thinking Oh, this is such a big one. This is the opposite of overgeneralizing. So let me explain. This is where you might believe that certain acts will influence you that are totally unrelated. For instance, I'm a good person. So if I don't get that job, something's wrong. The job might have a few variables. Why you didn't get it, but it has no bearing on the fact that you're a good person. There's a lot of good people that apply for jobs, right? So you not getting the job doesn't immediately mean that you're not a good person. So typically, magical thinking does go inward. It's usually someone blaming themselves or even blaming God or blaming karma, whatever, 
for something that is happening in their lives, even something financial. Another thing is personalizing. So that is where you might have a belief that you're the reason why things happen. You turn everything on yourself. Like my mom was a drinker when I was a kid. She used to get drunk. She was an alcoholic and um, I wasn't easy to raise. So therefore, um, I should have done more for her. That, that's, a, that's an example. Um, another example might be if you um, are saving money, but you're not saving enough for what you want, you will say that you didn't do enough when maybe you did everything you could. It just sometimes ends don't meet. Jumping to conclusions is another thing that people do. That's another cognitive distortion. This is so common that people often don't understand this. So, and when I say don't understand it, people do this all of the time. So an example is, oh, they didn't text me back. They must hate me. When it comes to financial therapy, this might look like assuming that there's money in the bank without checking. I've heard other financial therapists talk about this topic over and over. It's extremely top common. And I've heard other therapists talk about this with trauma, with relationships, whether they're a couples therapist. It's just such a typical thing to hear. How about mind reading? So interpreting the thoughts of others without evidence. That's what that is. So for instance, he didn't call me after the date, so he must think I'm ugly. So such an inobservant person can act like they are a psychic and they will see someone else thinking and feeling. But if they believe that they understand what someone's reasoning is, but they haven't verified it, they will jump to the conclusion. And sometimes that conclusion is right. And it's usually a 50-50, right? So if you're right 50% of the time, because it's just happenstance, it's like a roulette wheel, you might start to think that you are a mind reader, but you're not going to understand that sometimes you're wrong. Or sometimes you believe that you're right because you've told the story to yourself. And this is where I'm going to my next one is fortune telling. This is another thing. A financial therapist might outline the expectation is that a situation will turn out badly without evidence. So something like, and, and this is not financial, but I'm not going to go on a date. What's the point? He's going to think I'm too fat. That's something that people say a lot. A lot of women will say something like that. In the past, when I've had clients that did this, they would behave differently based upon their own negative emotions, even if the reality in front of them was completely contradictory to how they felt. So a fortune teller typically predicts the future and prepares itself for the bad consequence. As an example, such thoughts process automatically. They forecast the problems and predictions in the first few days or weeks leading to the holiday, the thing, the whatever. Uh, the person might say, I better buy that. It's going to sell out. And when the toy's not selling out, in, they're going to say it's no longer a hot toy. I mean, I know I just said a lot right there, but basically don't fortune tell. It's just not appropriate. Um, and we're getting to a point now where I want to talk about emotional reasoning. This is Emotional reasoning is a cognitive distortion that really happens a lot. It's, it's like saying that what you feel is the truth. And you probably have heard a lot of therapists say things like feelings are not fact, right? So women might say something like, I feel like I'm a bad wife. Therefore, they think they are a bad wife. In financial therapy, this might be that you feel like you're bad with money. Well, if you feel like you're bad with money, it doesn't mean you are bad with money. It just means you haven't developed the rituals and habits and the know-how to become better with money. So a lot of times people think that even if they're in debt, that they're just not good with money. But sometimes that debt can be just a couple of bad decisions. But you've made a lot of good decisions with your money too. So don't cut yourself short, okay? And um, understand that it might be time for family therapy or informal therapy or even traditional therapy to help you to process your finances and stress. So disqualifying things like um, disqualifying the positive self, that is another form of cognitive distortion when you only recognize the negative aspect of something. So maybe you get a compliment on what you're wearing and all you can think of is that uh, the person must have said it because they don't like what you're wearing. Like it was, a, it was like it was a backhanded compliment or you can't accept the compliment in some way. That's also disqualifying. 
And so when you disqualify yourself, you're, you're minimizing yourself. Um, and also, you know, you just have to think about, you know, that when you have to decipher your communication and the way you speak to yourself, these cognitive distortions are not easy to pick up when you do them yourself. They're not because they're a part of how we communicate. So if you're someone who talks with your hands, like I right now am doing a podcast, obviously, but I'm not doing it on camera, but I'm still talking with my hands. There is nobody in the room right now and I am talking with my hands. And so that's habit. That's part of my communication. So it would be very hard for me just to, you know, sit on my hands and have this conversation and make it feel natural because this is the way I communicate. So if the way you communicate is through some distorted thinking and some cognitive distortions, you will find it very hard to not use them because they're part of your coping strategies. And even your ideas about how you relate to money and to finances is part of your reality. And so it takes a lot to tweak that. So anyway, if you're interested in learning how to self-heal, if you're interested in learning how to have a plan to get out of some of these cognitive distortions, go to my website, thefinancetherapist.com. And when you go to thefinancetherapist.com, you're going to see a free PDF healing planner. This healing planner is for you to enjoy, to self-help, whether you're working with another therapist, whether you're reading books, no matter what your self-help is, if you're following someone on TikTok, it just doesn't matter what it is that you're doing for your self-help, you need to have a plan. The plan is going to keep you from having these cognitive distortions because you're going to have a plan on perhaps even breaking out of one of these distortions. But when you have a plan, instead of sort of doing things on a whim, you get to see not only your progress, but you get to chart out what it is that you really need. And that's incredibly important because often people self-help on a whim. They sort of go, oh, this feels good. You know, even right now, this might be the first time you've listened to, to me or interacted with me in any way, right? And even if not, you may not be taking notes. You may not be, uh, maybe there were a few things that I just spoke about that you're like, hmm, that does sound like me. And it might've been an aha moment. It might've hit you some sort of way. But what are you going to do about it in three days? What are you going to do about it in a week, in a month? In three months, are you going to remember this? And if you do, will you have had a plan? And so this is what the PDF planner is going to do for you. So it's free. And when you get it, you're going to also get emails from me every single week with some type of inspiration or discussion on finance therapy and trauma healing to help you to have that plan. So let's talk soon. Go over to my website, thefinancetherapist.com, and I will connect with you there.